Okay, so as you should know, there is a mean value theorem of differentiation, but there is also a mean value theorem of integration. So let's look at the statement first, and then we'll ask why is this intuitive? And once we look at the geometry of the equality, then we'll see that the geometry is very simple. So here's the statement. If f of x is continuous, on the interval from A to B, then there exists a point, which we'll call C, that lies within the interval AB, such that, and here's the equality, the definite integral of f of x from a to b is exactly equal to the value of the function at c times b minus a. So that's the conclusion. If f of x is continuous on a b, then there must exist at least one point between a b such that the integral of f of x from a to b equals f of c times b minus a. Now to prove this result, all you need is the extreme value theorem and the intermediate value theorem. The proof is fairly straightforward but a bit technical, so I'll skip it and I'll only present to you the intuition. Why should this result be fairly intuitive? And it will be so once we ask ourselves what is the geometric interpretation of both sides of the equality? And once we answer this question, the equality will become apparent. And just for argument's sake, you will assume that f of x is positive, but even if parts of f on a, b were negative, the argument is the same. This will simply simplify our picture. And again, we know geometrically that the definite integral of f of x dx from a to b gives us the net area under the curve. Now, assuming f is positive, we simply get the area below the curve between a and b. So we'll here assume that this is the case, that f of x is non-negative. And just for simplicity again, we'll assume that f of x is increasing and concave up. So as we have said, the left-hand side of the equality, the definite integral of f of x dx from a to b, geometrically, as in our case f is assumed to be non-negative over the interval, is exactly the area below the curve over the interval from a to b. So the area of this region is exactly the left-hand side of our equality. And now, how can we make sense of the right-hand side geometrically? Well, if you look here, we have simply a product of two numbers, f of c times b minus a. But if you look, b minus a is the length of our interval. And if you think of this as the area of a rectangle, which of course is the base times the height, b minus a is the length of our base, so f of c would have to be the height of our rectangle. And you can imagine that if you choose the value of c just right, the area of the rectangle will be exactly the area of this region. Right? Imagine that I choose c to be this point right here. Then, this point is the y value on the function, therefore the value is f of c. And now let me complete the rectangle. The base goes from A to B, the height is f of c, and so I have the following rectangle now, whose height is f of c, and whose base is the interval A, B. And you can see that if you choose any given point C, you can look what happens, right? From A to C, when you find the area of the rectangle, at least this portion of the rectangle, 
you'll be adding too much area. But from C to B, as you're adding the area of the rectangle, you will be adding too little. So on the one hand, you're adding too much. On the other hand, you're adding too little. And you can imagine, as you move the height of your rectangle up and down, therefore, as you let C vary between A and B, there has to be a sweet spot where the area you're adding that's extra is exactly equal to the area that you're missing. And once you hit that sweet spot, then the area of the rectangle will be exactly the same as the area below the curve between x equals a and x equals b. And that is the statement of the mean value theorem. So really just think of it that way. In general, the integral of f of x dx from a to b gives a net area below the curve over the interval. And if the function is continuous, so if there's no break in the function over the interval, there has to be the sweet spot between a and b where if you take f of c to be the height of your rectangle, then b minus a being the length of the interval, then this corresponds to the area of this rectangle. And the area of this rectangle is exactly the same as the exact area below the curve over the interval from a to b. And that's it. Let's consider an example of a continuous function over an interval where we find the value of c that is stated in the mean value theorem of integration. So we'll consider quite simply x squared on the interval, say, from 0 to 2. So we can visualize this quite easily as we have a very simple function. When we go from 0 to 2, so the first step, of course, is to evaluate the left-hand side of the equality, the integral of the function over the interval, which will give us, from 0 to 2, x squared dx. And this is, of course, x cubed over 3 from 0 to 2. At 2, we get 8 over 3, minus at 0, which gives us 0. So the integral is 8 thirds. So now we can look at the statement of the mean value theorem of integration. So the integral is 8 thirds. This will equal f of c times b minus a. Well, f of c times b minus a, 2 minus 0 is simply 2. So it's 2 times f of c. Well, we can divide by two both sides. And now I have that f of c is going to be simply 4 thirds. But of course, f of c is simply c squared. So we must solve the equality c squared equals 4 thirds. Take the roots on both sides. But of course, c here is plus or minus the root of 4 thirds. But clearly, c, if you look back to the statement of the theorem, c must be between a and b. And the interval here goes from 0 to 2. And therefore, c is positive, so c is the square root of 4 over 3. Now, if you use your calculator, you will find an approximate value of 1.15. So let's look at now what this means, again, geometrically. What is the meaning of this value of x? So this is x equals 1, and c is a little larger than 1, 1.15, so c is about here. And this is again the square root of 4 over 3. 
So, what is the corresponding y value? Well, y is the value of x squared. So if you square the root of 4 over 3, of course you get 4 over 3. So that is our corresponding y value. And, well, the left-hand side was the area below the curve between a and b. So the area of this region is exactly 8 over 3. And let's now see that the area of our rectangle is also 8 over 3. Well, our base has length 2 minus 0, which is 2. And the height is 4 over 3. And we can draw the rectangle. Now the height is 4 thirds. So if we draw a rectangle over the base 0 to 2, whose height is 4 thirds, then we have the area of this rectangle. And the area, of course, is the base times the height, 2 times 4 thirds gives you, of course, 8 over 3. And so that's basically it. And you can see the picture looks pretty good. The area of the rectangle, whose base is over 0 to 2, and whose height is the value of the function at x equals root of 4 thirds, the value is exactly 4 over 3, the y value. Therefore, the height of the rectangle is 4 thirds, the base is 2, so the area is exactly 8 over 3, which is the exact area of the region below y equals x squared over the interval from 0 to 2. So, this is the value of c that is stated in the mean value theorem. And the picture looks pretty good. You can see that the area, when you find the area of the rectangle, here you're adding up the area of this region, so this is extra, but over here you're missing the area of this region. And what you're adding as extra is exactly what you're missing. And that's it. So hopefully with this, the mean value theorem of integration seems more intuitive.